Giro d'Italia is live and on demand at each stage on GCN+. Plus. More rain, torrential rain greeted the riders on day 13. Not given a moment's rest by the weather at this particular race, the 106th edition bringing a stage shortening on day 13. A neutral start, a ceremonial start in Borgo Franco di Vrea, but after that, the riders would get back into the buses and instead of 199 kilometers taking on three massive mountains, they would take on 75 kilometers, starting in Switzerland at the base of the penultimate climb, mountain, mountain, a firework filled day. But after the damp start and the transfer in bus, which took a good couple of hours itself. So starting just at the foot of Verbier, heading up the Croix de Coeur, the extreme weather protocol put into action after the riders' union agreed with the race organisers to make a change to the stage. A finish after that first climb and dangerous looking descent to Con Montana, the first ever Giro finish where Tour of Suisse last finished there 10 years previous. And the attacks came from the gun. Thibaut Pino was at it, Einer Rubio, Derek G yet again. And Matthew Ritchie Tello was trying to get in there, his teammate. Cepeda was active as well. And behind the Magliarosa was attempting to calm things down. Thibaut Pino took the maximum points over the top of the first category, Croix de Coeur. And on the descent, he'd lead things alongside Valentin Paché Peintre, who was in really aggressive mood. Paché Peintre would soon be caught by everybody else down at the bottom. And in the valley, they would ride with a four-minute gap, but already there were a few arguments about who was pulling their weight, or perhaps who wasn't. In that valley, the Maya Rosa group were pulling things down. Ben Swift riding fantastically well uphill, down Dale, and on the flat. And once we got to the final climb, Thibaut Pino kicked things off. First man to be distanced would be Valentin Palais-Peintre. Derek G was playing catch-up as well. In the Maglia Rosa group, it would be Lorenzo Fortunato who would give it a first go. And Hugh Carthy would try to join him. Carthy sitting just outside the top ten, trying to pull back some time. His teammate Alexander Cepeda was still in the break and trying to attack. But after a million attacks, it seemed, from Thibaut Pino, Cepeda was falling out with him. Rubio sitting on. Carthy dropping Fortunato, but not much else was happening behind. All the action, all the drama was out the front. One attack from Caruso didn't really make too much of a difference. That would be neutralised and brought back. And in the final few hundred metres, Pino, who'd been bossing things, causing all the drama, attacking more than anyone else, had his pocket picked. Cepeda the first to surrender in the sprint. Pino trying to hold on in what should be his last Grand Tour. And Eine Rubio. He'd been coming to the Giro for a while. The Colombian who moved to Italy as he turned professional, winning a Giro d'Italia stage and coming of age as a rider. It'll be six measly seconds for Hugh Carthy to take back in the GC. Everyone else coming back home with Andreas Lechtenson losing just a handful of seconds at the finish line. All the glory belonging to team Movistar and Eina Rubio. The Spanish team winning a stage of the Giro for the first time in four years. Heartbreak. And another up. Plenty of downs in the career of Thibaut Pinot. Rubio winning by six seconds from Pinot. 12 in front of Cepeda, those three animating the race, another top five for Derek G and Valentin Paré-Peintre was there as well. Maglia Rosa for Geraint Thomas, no change in the overall standings. Two seconds ahead of Primoz Roglic, 22 in front of Almeida. 42 though, a seven second loss for Andreas Lechnerson. Pino into the top 10 with that ride and he now reclaims the king of the mountains jersey but the lack of a smile on the face tells you how his day went. It's a 10-point lead over Davide Baiz in the King of the Mountains competition. Rubio with his escapades 
moves into third place. A two-star stage coming up. Stage 14 from Switzerland heading straight back into Italy. There's one mighty mountain to take on, but it's a long way from the finish. It's Passo Sempione, the Simplon Pass, before heading across to Lombardy. Will it be a sprint finish? Will the breakaway go? Well, at this Giro d'Italia, anything can happen. And things, as we saw today, maybe not happening as well. Switzerland, the hosts, for one evening. We return to Italy for stage 14. You can see it live and on demand on GCN+.